Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. Whatever game I'm going to cover when it comes to the Premier Division of the Top Chess Engine Championship, I think we need to look at the current standings. We have had 25 games out of the way so far, and even though we had started with a 50% winning streak, this piece of stats is now changing. With 16 draws out of 25 games, that winning streak has now reduced to just about 36%, and this is no surprise given the last seven games finished in a draw. And before I move on with the featured game of today, let's have a sneaky peek at the standings. Stockfish leads, but just look at the number of draws, even for Stockfish, four in total. Komodo 2 has four draws and only two wins, and Anskax, that is now at third position, has only managed a single win. If you really need to look at the most important column, this has to be the point of each engine, along with the number of games played. Only Stockfish and Ginkgo have played seven games, and all other engines six. What I want to look at is the game between Komodo and Huron. This is their round seven game, game 26, because again, there is really some interesting developments here. Though it is not finished, whether this game ends in a draw, which might be highly unlikely, I think it's one game we could not afford to miss. So here we go. Komodo is white, and as usual, we have an eight move opening book. And this is a starting position. And what on earth are we looking at here? Maybe a Nimzo, but we see for missing we can also be looking at a Queen's Gambit accepted, or something very close to this. Okay, let's go back to see where the moves came from. Knight f3, the red c, c6, this move, d5, d4, and we have already the Queen's Gambit arising, and after knight f6 and knight c3, e6, and we are going for a semi-slav type of structure. After e3 and bishop b4, there was bishop d3, takes and takes. And after knight bd7 and castles, the engines are in fact starting from this position. And what a better way to see the engines play out the semi-slav. And immediately, the bishop was attacked. The bishop can either be traded for the knight or be backed off. Neither move is better than the other. Some people choose to exchange the bishop for the knight, and some people choose to retain the bishop. In this game, Hiron chose to keep his bishop alive and backed him off to this spot on d6. The bishop is quite safe for now. There is no piece that can go after him. Komodo has plenty of responses, and one you don't expect to see is h3. Komodo went for it. And I can never understand this type of move. G4 is quite safe. So what is the importance of H3? Hiram responded with E5. And here come the slightly complicated tactics in. Commodore went for this queen move, getting it out of D1, just in case this guy on E5 moves forward to attack the knight. Hiram decided to trade in. Another knight made his way into the game, going after the bishop. Komodo retreated, and now we have this answer, h6, and already from move 14, we have the first gamble. Can you see anything that can come about from this position? Let's test it, shall we? So here we go, in two, one, and pause. The key to this move is this bishop here on a2 that is keeping an eye, a tight eye on this guy on f7. The move you're looking for is the move Commodo went for. Bishop takes h6, and of course, Hero didn't even calculate too deep. He removed the bishop, and here the queen uses the aid of a bishop on a2 to come in with a check, and this is what you get. The king being forced to the corner. And with the queen removed h6 with a check, the knight returned to cover. 
So it seems this knight on f6 is enough to stop any real disaster. So how is white going to break open the king's side? f6 is an important spot and black is going to use it to try and defend. Come on, attack the bishop. But it wasn't too hard to figure out what the engine was going to do. He retreated to b7 and this spot on f6 is double protected. And this is another moment in this game, so I would expect you to have an educated guess. With Komodo to play, any ideas what the engine came up with in two, one, and pause. Now, this is an impossible move to find, so I hope you're able to fish it out, not in the first attempt, not in the second, but at least in the third. Knight f6, and what an impossible possibility. The most weird thing is that Heron is not even showing a remote interest of wanting to take this knight. Okay, what I'm going to do is to skip this part of the analysis and return to it in the end. With a very close chance of mating on h7, if we don't want to take this knight, it had to be this response, and there is a way. Can you see it? Bishop to f5. We don't have a mate just yet, or maybe never. G4 is something of interest to go for. And yet, it's all about how Komodo wants to go about it here. He got the knight out of this take and got him into h5. Both engines calculate this position as 0 0.91 and 1.31 respectively. So both engines know white is up, but there is plenty of juice in this game. The biggest question to address is whether the engine with the advantage can find the winning combo, if there is one. This position is extremely complex even to work out. The knight on h7 is pinned, but he's always keeping this rook on f8 quite safe so the queen herself could not touch him. With the mate in one on g7, there is one forcing move or two, and here one has to choose the right one. If there is a right way to do this, of course. One is moving the rook to g8, and two to get the bishop on f6. Here on went for a bishop move, and now if this game was not complex enough, why not add to the complexity of this position? Any ideas what Komodo did here in two, one, and pause? Knight g5, and we know this bishop on f6 cannot remove him because if he abandons f6 in the wrong direction, a mate on g7 is going to be a very easy answer. So what the engine did was to remove d4, and how critical can this game be? A move to pin the bishop is simply not going to work. Komodo came up with this move to cover for the knight, and now the bishop returns to where he was. And here comes another very dangerous threat. Bishop to b1, ready to trade in, so that the knight on h7 can be removed, and black is right away mated. Just keep your eye open to see how Heron deals with this worry, and only an engine could do this. Queen to d6, and what a game. With every possibility of a mate on both g7 and h7 being covered, the only solution is to remove this queen. When the queens came off, Heron was about to live another day. But can the engine get out of this game in one piece? And from here, one piece was disappearing after the other. The bishop on f5 was also removed. And when the knights also departed, has Komodo got enough to continue with his vicious attack? If the king was not on g1, or Komodo has castled long, well, this would have been child's play. Right now, each engine has exactly the same pieces on the board, to the very last pawn. Oh, I beg your pardon. Komodo has a pawn more. But if this guy on g2 was not here, this would have been even easier for Komodo. Here on here, rushed to get his own pieces into the game and went for this rook move. Komodo thrusted this guy forward, and now Huron tries to get his knights into the game too. 
but with this move to d5, where is the knight going to go? Or where is he planning to go next? f4 is the only logical answer to get the knights off. Of course, f4 looks spot on, and yet Komodo tries something else. A king move to g2. And we know now for sure that what the idea is. This is, in fact, not very difficult to figure out. Hero repositioned his own king and threw this rook move. Hero on two went for a rook move, looking desperately for a trade off. Hero went for it. And now we might get an idea what this knight is doing here. He's keeping guard of this spot on f6 so that the knight cannot enforce the fork. What if we get the rook into step into d1 and work with this idea? Nice, but not nice enough because the bishop can return to e7 and white has no real attacking chances. I think Komodo has a small weakness here and it's all about down to these double pawns. But the engine has the perfect answer to rectify this problem. The dragon came in with a check, a knight check. When the knight was taken for the knight, these double pawns were no longer. Bishop f4 was one tremendous response because it destroys many plans for white, namely f4 and even g5. Rook d1, bishop back to g5, and rook d6 protected this guy on f6. And the thing about this pawn on f6, he's so strong, and with the aid of his bishop, the king on g8 is not going anywhere. If you can only manage to get the rook out of the back rank and stick your own rook there, this game will be over. If Hiran is losing, he has nothing to fear. Though the engine is at the very bottom of the cross table, this does not mean much. Just refer to the engine Zelo, and that will be enough. Hiran came up with this king move, and after b4, rook e2, and bishop to c8, b7 was the target. This move got the rooks to come off, and when b7 came off, we are looking at some very complex endgame, which goes hand in hand with the rest of this game. Complex start, a complex mid game, and a very complex endgame. When the bishop removed b7, I'm not sure if c6 can be saved, so we're looking at a huge pawn surplus, but with opposite color bishops, can this game lead to a decisive result? Here on pursuit this pawn, and after these few moves, when the bishop took c6, Hiron also removed b4, and now Komodo has twice as many pawns as Hiron's. King f3, bishop c5, locking in the king in place, and now g5. This game is going to go as far as it can go. Bishop d6 led to this bishop move, and when this guy began to walk, there is in fact nowhere he can really go because this guy on a4 cannot easily be removed. Only the king can do this. But you tell me how this king on f8 is going to get to him. The same story goes for this guy on a6. Hiram pushed him to safety. And now the bishop moved into place. This strategic move also locked in the king on f8. And this is how the game continued. Bishop e5, king e4. Bishop back to c3, and f4. Even this guy on a4 cannot be removed now. Bishop b4, king e5, a bishop check, and king back to e4 was making this game a near impossible task for Komodo to win. A near identical case emerged until the king squeezed into f5. But how is the king, or white, going to make progress? And since Hiron is happy with his current position, this is what he went for. King back to e4, led to this bishop response, and through these follow-up moves, the game was by no means determined. The engines evaluate this position as 1.12 and 1.88, but does this mean there is a win anywhere? Similar moves followed until the king was checked, and when he returned to f8, 
this is how Komodo carried on. As you can see, even an engine like Komodo is unable to find his way to victory, and this game can lead to a draw in the end. On move 65. With all these moves and no progress, the game should have been drawn a long time ago. And maybe here is looking for a 50 move rule to each the result the engine deserves. There is no way anything can be done even with this obscene pawn surplus. It's all about these opposite colour bishops. So for all those who are watching this game, this game is a draw because these moves are going to be repeated and repeated as they have for some time now. I do love seeing engines play, but when it comes to these type of situations, why on earth can a patch be written to see this position can't go anywhere? And here, just before the 50 move rule kicks in, Komodo goes for g6 to force an exchange. After takes, the bishop didn't even capture. We saw bishop back to b1, and after king g8, it was king to g5, and this guy on g6 is coming off. This was not an issue at all, but how the game is going to finish. Bishop to d2, led to g6 coming off, and when the king made his way west of the board, king f5, and slowly, slowly, is trying to creep up with this guy. Bishop c1, king e5, bishop a3, and bishop back to e4, got the bishop to come in with a check, and now after king e6, was this game going anywhere? Bishop c1 forced eventually this guy to move up the board, and now through these moves, we have the same story unfolding. So far the king does not move away from f8. This game is drawn, I'm going to shut up so that you can see the moves in peace. Hiron is even looking for a stalemate with this position on the board. On this move, even the bishop stepped in to put an end to this game and look where he came. And if you take him, with the king having no moves, a stalemate will be reached. The big dragon ignored and carried on as if a win could be found.
Some people can call this board position embarrassing, but I'm not sure any engine can feel embarrassed. But shortly, the 50 move rule is going to kick in. We are already on move 170, and this is going to go until we have an adjudication rule. And once again, with the rule approaching, Commodore allows the bishop to remove f6, and even though the bishop doesn't need to take, it took, and we are looking at another 50 moves. And here we go again, when the king moved into e6, we had broken the 200 move barrier, but the end is approaching fast. And here we have it. The game ends in a dead draw, and despite the different evaluations. And just to draw your attention to these evaluations, there is a big gap between them. And this is a problem with these engines, even when the game cannot result to a win unless a huge blunder is made. And this is one area where the engines, many engines are weak, and we are looking for some changes, programming changes, so that these engines are able to calculate a theoretically drawn game as a draw. Okay, this was another tremendous game which I began to cover as it was being played, not only to realise how far it would go, if only I knew earlier, but to see this game unfold and to see how it developed, do I regret anything? No, but we are not finished yet because I do need to go back to this move and allow me to reach it to explain why the engines went for these choices and not anything else. So please bear with me. And here we are. When the knight moved into f6, why can't the bishop take him? Anyone here can enlighten the rest who might be wondering? We know the bishop came into f5 to stop the mate, but what happens if you take this knight? And this is it. Bishop to b1 and the mate is triggered. The only way to prevent the mating one is bishop f5, but when the bishop is taken against any move, any move, we do have a mate when the knight is taken, and let's hear it. And this, I hope, explains why this bishop moved into f5 in the first place. And since we are on the subject, a few more moves further. After rook d1, this move falls short to this one. Queen takes knight, and when the queens come off, only another bishop can be arrested, and this is the reason why Komodo wanted to keep the tension. But with this position on the board, he runs up by full piece, and this is winning for black. So in short, this was one very precise game from start to end. If after the bishop took on d4, white went for knight takes h7, after the bishop recaptures, even after this bishop move to b1, there is still no mate because black is saved through this move, f5, and this game goes again to black. Up to move 203, the evaluation for Komodo was 1.25, but for Heron, this was three zeros. So one big problem at least Komodo has is that the dragon tends to exaggerate these evaluations 
and this is why the engine was looking for a win when no win could be achieved. Only a move 213, Komodo's Evil dropped to three zeros. And if this means something, well, you can draw your own conclusions. In fact, I want to add something else here. On move 157, and when Komodo was up by two pawns, Hiron's own Evil was in fact close to zero, even when Komodo's was double that. And sometimes he had jumped to three times that. And at some stages, Komodo's own evil had even jumped to 1.88, and yet we knew this was exaggerated. Okay, a very interesting game to say the least, with some very rich variations. And right after Hiron decided to go for h6, which led to the bishop sacrifice, and this is another game for the history books. Okay, I shall be returning to cover some other very interesting games. So until next time, this was your chess puzzler.